could feel a bit strange thinking about your mum or dad swiping right on Tinder, or even Grindr. But as the last of us Gen Xers are sneaking over the line to 50, there's more of us doing it. Less than 10 years ago, a tiny 10% of people over 65 had access to the internet. In the last 18 months, that number's grown to a massive 58%. It's a natural progression. 15 or 20 years ago, us oldies were using personal ads in print media. It wasn't quite the age, sex, location kind of approach, but we were putting ourselves out there. And we still are. Over 50s are the fastest growing sector of an increasingly competitive online dating market. And it's also the most likely way people of that certain age are actually going to meet. There is a bit of a downside to the growing older singles market. There's more of us out there than ever before. Lifespans are going up for sure, but that doesn't mean every marriage is going to end up like Duke and Alley in the notebook. By the time we hit 75, there's two girls for every guy. Which I guess is good news for the blokes, so hang in there. That pretty much covers the whys. It's time to get down to tin tacks. The how. I don't want to labour on the process too much. We all know how it goes. You fill in the form, then you wait. But it does seem there's some pretty important steps in filling in that form and some pretty good rewards if you get it right. But in my experience, it's kind of like turning up for a first date every time you open your email. Now, those nerves are actually a part of a social communications theory that pretty much resembles an onion. The first cab off the rank, or the layer, is something called social comparison theory. The first stage of the process is self-disclosure, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You give away just a little bit of yourself at a time. We start with our profiles, and we make them as positive as we can. Yeah, you get to have another go at that selfie. Jennifer Hillman has written the book on sexuality and aging. Twice. In a decade. And she says the rumours are true. Older men have professed to preferring younger, prettier women. And that's pretty much it, ladies. They want you to look good, and then get married. As for the ladies, well, we're looking for intelligent, stable men, which I think is researcher code for rich. But by the time we actually hit 75, we finally worked it out. There's just not enough blokes left to go around. There's two of us for every one of them. Plenty of studies have shown that there's a pile of traits that make someone attractive. The darling of the online set, if you like. But the secret is still in the onion. Our theory says, if you go at it too hard, just like an onion, it's going to make you cry. Reaching back to before I was born, there were a couple of guys named Joe and Harry. They came up with the next part of what's become social penetration theory. And it's got the best name. It's the Johari window. Just like getting married, these two blokes came up with an idea and whacked their names on it. Joe and Harry. So, in seven minutes, the best I can do is tell you that the Johari window works a little bit like the old Maya Briggs personality tests. The methodology they used, or use, is someone else watching you, observing and putting you in a box marked social or artistic or conventional. Originally developed to help people build group-based relational skills, the Johari model can also be really valuable in working out more about yourself. When you tie it together with Maslow's theories around needs and self-actualization, it becomes apparent why we trickle info out to prospective partners. Oh, so it's not obvious? Well, that's because you don't ever really know everything there is to know about yourself. You need a bit of help from people who see you differently. So the feedback we get in the early part of a relationship helps us build our self-images. And at that stage, it's usually all positive. 
So we've gotten through the worst of it, the self-examination phase of our onion theory. Now it's time to kick in the social equality phase. By giving out snippets about ourselves, we're hoping to get the same in return. And then we can make decisions. But one thing that might trip up even the most experienced of us is what's been referred to as the hyper-reality of online relationships. It's especially prevalent before you meet up in person. There's two big factors that turbocharge online relationships. We've all come across the anonymity aspect, but something I hadn't considered until now was affordability. Back to that turbocharge for a second. It's worth doing all that work for the ideal self version of your profile. If it works the way it should, you'll be lining up for movie tickets with a new friend less than a week after making first contact. Now, if you're feeling a bit squeamish over the thought of accidentally swiping right on your mum or dad one night, it's about to get a little bit worse, sorry. The numbers say there's some corporeal realities that can put a dampener on things. The needs are real, ladies and gents. And that's just the next layer we peel off that self-examining, self-revealing, socially challenging onion theory. There's a trio of researchers in Texas who are practically protesting at the reaction of younger people to older people's need to stay, well, active. And they reckon, despite the risks of being purposely misled by miscreants and or misinformation, the perfect scabbard for the sword is likely going to turn up online. They reckon that just because it's not nice to talk about older people having love lives, even if it's just holding hands, they say it's necessary. Online dating works for older people because it's flexible. It's anonymous, it's cheap, and it's adventurous. Even if you go into it knowing there's only a 10% chance you're going to make it out the other end with a soulmate, we can all follow Justine Copeland's lead and go in with the intention to age just ever so slightly disreputably.